that means the big banks are leading us off. This is kind of a critical earnings report for the big banks. What are they seeing? What's going on behind the scenes? Uh, let's jump right in and see what's happening with these stocks. So the first one has to be JP Morgan Chase. JPM is the ticker, just two misses in five years, so it's got a great earnings surprise track record. But the shares are now down almost 16% here year to date as people are getting a little jittery even about the banks here in 2022. Its PE has dropped back down to 12, so it is a bit cheaper, and the dividend is now yielding 3%, which isn't too shabby for these big banks. Uh, but the question is going to be, what does J.P. Morgan and Jamie Dimon tell us on the conference call? We already did get a letter from Jamie Dimon outlining kind of how he sees the global economy going for the rest of the year, and that was a little bit pessimistic. So can these shares get a little bit cheaper? They could. And they might be much more of a buying opportunity at that point, but this is going to be the big one to kick us off. So we'll see what happens. Then we're going to switch over to one of the names that used to be the troublemaker, but Wells Fargo, is it anymore? I don't know. Look at that big rebound after the pandemic started. So this has been kind of a pandemic winner. And even here year to date in 2022, it's only um, it, it actually isn't even down. It's up about 2%, but off those early 2022 highs. So what's going on with Wells Fargo? They've always been a big mortgage uh, operator, and we know those mortgage rates have really spiked and applications are down. So how's that going to impact their earnings? They're trading at 12 times with a dividend of just 2.1%. So this is going to be an interesting one to watch on the housing side. Then we're going to switch over to Goldman Sachs. This, too, was also a huge pandemic winner. You can see the big streak there during the pandemic, except for the last quarter, where it did have a rare miss there. But this uh, Goldman Sachs, one of the cheaper of the big banks with a, dip, uh, with a uh, P.E. of just 8.7, it does pay a dividend yielding 2.5%. But these shares are down 16% here now year to date, similar to JP Morgan. And maybe that's creating a, a buying opportunity here in one of the top named banks. Then we're going to look at one of the other troublemakers, Citigroup. They haven't missed at all in the last five years. That's very impressive, again, considering what was going on during the pandemic. And you can see the huge drop there right here. Uh, you know, when the pandemic hit, but it's been a rocky road. And even here in 2022, shares are down about 16%. So again, similar to JP Morgan um, and Goldman Sachs. So what's going on behind the scenes? Why is Citigroup so disliked here? It is the cheapest of the big banks with a forward P of just 7.1 and a dividend yielding 4% now on this pullback. But it has a new CEO in Jane Frazier, and can she turn it around? They have a lot of international business, which makes it a little bit different than some of the other bigger banks. And that's spooking a lot of people with what's going on over in Europe with the Ukraine war and even in China. So this is one to watch on the international side. But if you're trying to play those rise in uh, rates, from the Fed, Citigroup is probably not the stock and the bank for you. Then we're going to look at our final bank, Bank of America, which is also a big pandemic winner. You can see that they've put together five beats in a row now. So just those two misses during the pandemic. So they have a good track record of meeting or beating. Year to date, the shares are weaker, like most of the banks except Wells Fargo, down about 11% here year to date now trading at about 12 times with a dividend yield of 2.1%. So not the biggest dividend yield because of the big rally, but and not the cheapest, but Bank of America outside of JP Morgan is considered the second most um, you know, stable of these bigger banks after the financial crisis, which was now you know, about 14, 15 years ago. So this is one that a lot of people own, and uh, a lot of us are going to be watching this earnings season, but all these big banks are going to be high on the list. 
So the meet or the beat or the miss isn't really the big story with most of these big banks other than Goldman Sachs, which is coming off a rare miss last quarter. They all have real good earning surprise track records. It's really going to be about the outlook and what's happening behind the scenes with basically every company during this earning season, but especially the big banks. What will they tell us as they kick off earnings season? If anything, we will find out this week and into next week, and then we're really going to start to see the earnings roll out. So you don't want to miss a single earnings all-star video. I'm bringing them to you every week during earnings season, and you can get them on Zax.com slash YouTube. Get them on our YouTube channel, on our Twitter page, and also on my Twitter page. I'm going to be tweeting out a lot of earnings charts this earnings season. So you want to tune in there. You can tune in under my name, just at Tracy Reinick, and you'll get all the interesting earnings charts like the ones I brought to you today. So be sure to get us somewhere, and I'll see you again next time with some more earnings charts. <music>